Hello world and welcome to Web Dev Frontiers. My name is Tomasz and I'm here to share my experience with you in web technologies. In today's video, I'm going to show you a couple of very cool features inside Chrome DevTools and I'm hoping that you didn't know about this and that you will put these into great use. So let's jump straight in. The first feature that I would like to talk about has to do with editing box shadows. I have created a sample application where I utilize some CSS to create a shadow effect around this rectangle that you see that says Hello World. Now, I'm going to select this element, so this is a section element, and notice that I have the CSS rules in here under the elements view, and I have the box shadow setting right here, and notice there's a little purple icon which I can click on. And if I do that, that brings up the box shadow editor, which basically allows me to modify how my shadow looks like, so I can actually change its direction in any way I see fit, I can make it less blurry or more blurry, and I can also change its spread. So I could play around with this, maybe change this around a little bit like so, so it's only a tiny shadow. And then what I can do, I can right click box shadow and I need to select copy value. And so when I do that, I go back to my editor, find the CSS rule and just replace this with whatever I have copied and now I'm going to be using those settings straight from DevTools. This is really, really handy for making little tweaks live, especially for box shadows. Next up, I would like to talk about the badges. If you notice, next to the body, I have a badge here called Flex, and I can actually click on that, which basically will allow me to view how the Flex layout looks like on the site. Also notice that for the display property under the Styles tab here on the bottom, I also see Flex, and I also can click on this little icon, which will bring up additional rules about the Flexbox layout. And I can very easily change this. So I could change the direction, I can reverse it. Obviously I don't have columns at the moment, no rows, but I could you know, specify how it should be placed. I can put it to the left, put it to the right. I can align things, I can put them on top, so on and so forth. So again, this allows me to play with my layout live. Furthermore, I can also utilize this for the grid layout. So let's just go back to my CSS file in here and make sure that I enable a grid layout. Go back to the browser, refresh this page and notice now I get the grid label. And again, I'm getting grid specific overlay information in the browser and I can also click this and now I get the content in this pop-up box that is related to changing the grid layout, justifying the content, aligning the items, so on and so forth. So I can basically place these items all around. Please also note that there are some additional badges that you may see. All you need to do is right click, select badge settings, and these are the badges that you would be seeing inside DevTools. And for example, what if you don't want to see the grid badge at all because it bothers you, that you don't care about it, all you need to do is just uncheck this and notice it's also gone from my elements panel. This next feature is really one of my favorite ones. Did you know that using DevTools, you can take a screenshot of an actual HTML element? And you may have seen some screenshots of entire web pages and you were wondering, well, how can they capture the entire page content in a single screenshot? Well, probably they are using DevTools. So for this example, I have my blog open and I'm going to select the body element. I'm going to right click that and notice there's an option that says capture node screenshot. So I'm going to click that, which will download the file. And if I open up that file, you will notice that it saved a PNG version of the entire page. It even included the content that you didn't see on my screen. Let's make another example of this. So let's actually go to the blog page and you will see that there are at least 10 items listed in here. So that's again, go body, capture node screenshot, let the browser download the file, open the file, and there you go. The entire page is now captured in one single screenshot. This is really, really useful for adding these screenshots into maybe marketing materials or into presentations, and you can achieve this by using DevTools again. 
In a previous video, I already talked about the various features of the console panel inside DevTools. I'm going to put a link to that video somewhere on the screen and also in the description. But what I would like to show you right now is the fact that you can use top level weight directly inside the console. So for example, you could run something as simple as this, where you say await, new promise, resolve, reject, and then you resolve to one, you hit enter, and this code is going to be executed. But of course, it's going to be a lot more useful for situations when you would like to test maybe a fetch API request to a particular REST API or any other endpoint that you have in mind. So for example, you could run a code like this. And again, notice there's no async function anywhere in here. You can use top level await directly inside your console. So if we run this, then this is going to actually go out to this endpoint and we get the data back straight in our console and we can now debug this or we can do whatever we want with the data returned. The next DevTools feature that I would like to show you has to do with CSS rules. So first and foremost, notice I've added a paragraph in here that comes up in red, but inside my CSS file, there are actually four CSS rules that would specify the color of that paragraph. So I'm setting it to blue, to red, to green and to purple but the red one won. So let's see if we can figure out why that is. Let's go ahead and select the paragraph itself. And notice by default, you will see some of these CSS rules to be crossed out. If you see that they are crossed out, it means that the CSS rule is not being applied to the element. So from this, I can see that it is the color red that is being applied. So DevTools tells you which CSS rules actually apply to your element. Furthermore, if I select the div class here, sometimes you would also see particular CSS rules not to be crossed out, but to be faded. And every now and then you will see a little eye icon in here, which you can hover your mouse over. And that's going to give you an explanation as to why this particular CSS rule is not applied. Usually this is due to a conflict. So in this case, we have the message that says the displayable property prevents align items from having an effect. So essentially, because I'm using a display block, I cannot use the align items on my body. So this is again, very, very useful. But going back to that paragraph, there's one more thing, which I think has been asked a million times by developers all over the web. And that is how can we display the specificity rules in CSS inside the browser, in particular inside DevTools. And believe it or not, there is a way, it's just a little bit tricky to get to. So if you want to know the specificity of a particular element, all you need to do is hover your mouse over the actual class or the definition, and that's going to bring up a little tooltip with the actual specificity rules. Okay, so if I hover my mouse over this, there's another specificity. If I hover my mouse over this, there's another specificity. Now, if you're not familiar with specificity rules, I try to summarize this up for you in a very simple way. If you have CSS rules that would apply to the same element and you have these CSS rules defined in various places, there's a little game that the CSS engine and the browsers play to figure out which rule is going to be the final one and therefore going to be applied to the element. And so think about it this way. If you have an ID selector, like the one that I have here, that will have the highest specificity score. The second one is going to be the class and the pseudo class selector, which will have some reduced amount of points in terms of this specificity game played by the browser. The third one is going to be the actual element selectors. So if you put in something like a div or a P or an H1. So that's going to be the third level. And then the fourth level are going to be the so-called universal selectors, which use the plus symbol or the tidy character. So they have the least amount of specificity. Maybe another analogy would be if you think about dressing up a door. So you're the owner of the door, you have your close friends, and then you have some random acquaintances to give you ideas on how to dress up the door. So you as the owner specify that the door's clothes should be red. Your close friends are going to say it should be yellow, and then your acquaintances are going to say it's going to be blue. 
So essentially, your rule is going to apply because you are the owner of this door. So basically, the further away the circle of your friends would expand, the least amount of specificity they have. And that is true for elements as well inside CSS. So again, remember, you have the ID selector, which is the highest, then the class, then element, and then the universal selectors. But anyway, if you would like to know what the final specificity rule is for a particular element, remember, inside DevTools, all you need to do is hover your mouse over the actual selector, leave your mouse there for a couple of seconds, and that will bring up a tooltip which will actually tell you the exact specificity. Last but not least, I would like to show you how to display a tree map of your website. Now, what is a tree map? A tree map is basically going to tell you the size of the various bundles that make up your entire site. So if you use a tool such as Source Map Explorer before or Bundler Analyzer, you would have seen a result very similar to this. But the question is, how do you bring that up using DevTools? Can you actually do that? Well, again, it's a little bit hidden, but you can do that by all means. So all you need to do is select a Lighthouse and make sure that you run a Lighthouse report. It doesn't matter which one you run, whether you run it mobile or desktop, just make sure that the performance category is actually checked. Okay, so I'm just going to click on Analyze Page Load and wait for this Lighthouse report to run. Once it runs, scroll down in the report and then notice there's a button in here that says View Tree Map. So click on that and that's going to give you a view of your website. So I can see that my website requested 400 Point one, sorry, 401.7 kilobytes. And then Google Tag Manager is 57% of that. And notice the rest is Chrome extensions, which brings up a very interesting point. Why would I care about Chrome extensions? Now, I plan on recording videos about web performance, and I do a lot of web performance consulting, and I do a lot of talks and other material on web performance. My recommendation is for anyone wishing to get a plain view of their site without any extension data, you know, whether you're in performance reports, you want to exclude anything that has to do with extensions or anything else, my recommendation would be is to create a profile, which you can call a clean profile. So essentially, I have that as well. And this clean profile is basically going to have zero extensions. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to load my website inside this profile again, then open up Lighthouse, analyze page load, and then we're going to get a result that will not include any of the Chrome extensions. But let's do this for another page, okay? So let's go to maybe, maybe Zenith Watches, again, just a watch website. Let's open up DevTools, go to Lighthouse, and let's analyze a page load, doesn't matter mobile or desktop, just make sure you have performance checked again. Let's click analyze page load, wait for the result, and take a look at the tree map. Here we have the report. So let's go and click view tree map. And now we get a much better view because this site, of course, uses different resources. So they loaded 3.4 megabytes of resources. And we can see that there's an app.js, which is 14%, vendors 12%. So they load something from a CDN 12%. And basically, we get a nice little breakdown into what this particular page loads. And if I zoom out a little bit, you will see that there are some additional boxes in here. And on the bottom, we also get a table, which basically also runs a coverage test. This is something that I have covered in a previous video. So again, I'm going to put a link out onto the page for you somewhere. But this is very good because it gives you an idea of what makes up your site. You know, you can look at this and you can say, OK, maybe I don't like the fact that app.js takes up 14% of my entire site. So maybe I will look into that to try to reduce that. And furthermore, this table will also help you. So for example, this tells us that about 50% of this app.js file is not being utilized on the current page. Now, you have to be careful with this coverage test. Again, have a look at that other video that I recorded as to why. Furthermore, you can also click into these boxes and that would bring up what are the actual packages that are part of the vendor.js file in this case. Again, this makes up 1%, but you know, for your website, this may look different. And this should give you a very good idea of the overall structure of all the resources that make up your site, which then you can use for performance optimization or for debugging or for just general observation of the structure. 
All right, so these were all the features that I wanted to share with you. If you are aware of any other cool DevTools features that you would like me to record or you would like to share, please add them in the comment section. Otherwise, if you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up as well as your subscription. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.